In this part of the lesson, we'll look at how we can declare and pass values to parameters of functions. Let's begin by opening up the file I've downloaded and extracted, and if necessary, click the Enable Content button when the file's loaded. You may well remember this example from previous parts of the module and the course. We have a list of characters for whom we would like to calculate some statistics related to their health, their body mass index, and then the category into which they fall. We can do that by dividing the weight in kilograms by the height in meters squared. And we already have the code which will do this attached to the Calculate BMI button. So you can click that button just to check that the code works and then clear the existing data. To see the code which does this, you can go to the Developer tab and open the Visual Basic Editor and look for the Process BMI List subroutine in Module 1. What we'd like to do for this example is extract the calculation for the BMI into a function. And in order to make that work, our function must be able to accept a weight in kilograms as a double and a height in meters as a double as well. Let's start by declaring the basic function that will perform this calculation. If I scroll down a little, I'll insert my new functions definition between the two subroutines already in this module. I'll call my new function body mass index. And then I'll also say what type of value the function returns, which in this case will be as double. What I now need to do is give my function the ability to accept two values. It needs to accept a weight and a height in order to perform the calculation. So just as I would were I declaring parameters for a subroutine, I can declare parameters for a function inside the parentheses after the function's name. Let's start with a parameter called weight and I'll state that its type is double. And then if I type in a comma, I can declare a second parameter called height also as double. So declaring parameters for a function is no different to declaring parameters for a subroutine. Now we can add in the code which calculates the result of the function. As I said in the previous part of this lesson, the code which calculates the function result could be many lines of code long. It could perform all sorts of complex calculations before reaching the final result. But as in the previous part of the lesson, our function is incredibly simple. We simply need to make this function return a value by dividing weight by the height squared. So I can immediately refer to the name of my function, body mass index, and make that equal to weight divided by height multiplied by height. I'll spell height properly. There we go. It is worthwhile testing that the function returns a result that looks sensible before we plug it into the main subroutine. So let's view the immediate window by heading to the view menu and choosing immediate window. We can then type in a question mark, which can ask a question and return a value. So if I type in a question mark, I then want to go for the name of my function. So I can press control and space and look for body mass index. If I can then open some parentheses, I'll see that the tooltip shows me, just as it would for calling a subroutine, the names and types of any parameters defined in the function. So let's put in some not quite imaginary values. Let's go for 77.1 for the weight in kilos, followed by a comma and 1.82 for the height in meters. If we close the parentheses and then hit enter, we'll find the result of our body mass index. As that all seems to be working correctly, we can close down the immediate window and then return to the main procedure and make a call to this function. So let's identify where we're calculating the BMI. Rather than performing the exact calculation that we're performing here, we can replace this with a call to our body mass index function. We can open some parentheses and again we see the tooltip appear. We need to pass in a reference to our weight in kilograms variable and height in meters variables. So let's refer to the weight in kilos variable, then a comma and height in meters. Close the parentheses and then that's the call to that function finished. The last thing to do is check that our main code still works. So let's head back into the Excel window and making sure we've cleared out the existing data, we can click Calculate BMI and we should find the same set of results as we saw previously, just with a slightly better organized code structure. At this point, you can either continue with the extra practice session at the end of this part of the lesson to gain some more experience with declaring functions and function parameters, Alternatively, you can move on to the next part of this lesson, which describes how to get a function to return a reference to an object.